Hello, and welcome to another Vero software video on using Cabinet Vision Solid. In the last video, we learned just how easy it is to create walls and how to place objects on those walls. In this video, we're going to go over how easy it is to edit existing objects, as well as how to store them for later use. So, what we have here is the walls and cabinets that we made in the last video. You can see that we have quite a few objects to play around with. Let's go ahead and edit the cabinet that we placed under the window. To edit an object from our plan view, we can either right click on it and select edit, or we can just simply double click on the object to bring us into the assembly editor. This is where the majority of all object editing is done. Before we go any further, let me talk about the different viewports that I have showing here. This one is the section viewport. Most basic and some advanced editing can be done here. This viewport is the orthographic viewport. Here is where I can do really advanced part editing and placement. And finally, this is the 3D viewport. This is used pretty much just as a viewer. Now, my viewports are kind of arbitrarily placed. I can use the tabs at the top of each port to change what each port shows. Let's start off with the section editor and go from there. Now, why is it called the section editor? Well, that's because while using this editor, you're going to edit sections of the cabinet. What constitutes a section, you might ask? Each opening face and side is considered a section of the object. If we click on the doors of this cabinet, you can see that they turn a kind of turquoise color. I'm pretty sure that's the name of the color. You know what, we'll just, we'll just call it blue. Now, this is a section. If we now click on the drawer front, it turns blue. As we change between the different sections, you can see the sidebar properties change to match the section properties. What we are working with here is the exterior section editor. We use this to work on the door and drawer fronts, as well as the ends and backs. We also have an interior section editor to edit any interior parts, such as shelving, partitions, and more. For now, let's go back to the exterior editor. Now, I have a 5-inch drawer front here. Let's say that I wanted to change that to 6 inches instead. You might think, dang, there's going to be some long process to change that with a lot of steps and other stuff to do, you know, because there's a drawer box attached to that drawer front. Well, I can say that you can forget that thought, as it's actually pretty simple to do. All we have to do is click on the drawer section, move over to the height, change the number to 6, and press enter. If you didn't notice, as the drawer section height increased, the door section height decreased. This is because cabinet vision will automatically adjust neighboring sections when one section is changed. And of course, you can see that the other viewports change to reflect the modifications we made in the section viewport. Let's take a moment to play around with the door section. One of the things we can do here is change the section type. Right now it's set as pair door. Let's see what happens when we change it to door. Now, instead of a pair of doors, we have one wide door. You can see that we have multiple different options here, and as I click on some of them, Cabinet Vision alters the section to match the appropriate type. Let's leave it as a pair door, though. From all viewports, we can see that we're missing some shelving here. So let's take care of that real quick. The first thing we need to do is go to the interior section editor, just like we did before. Now we can add a shelf two ways. We can either click on the section that we want to add the shelf to, and then click on the horizontal split, or we can, uh, let me delete the existing shelf first, click on the horizontal split tool, and then click on the section we want the shelf in. Either way works really. You can see how easy it is to do simple editing with the section editor. But what about some of the more advanced editing? You can see that we have five holes on either side of the shelf. This gives us a limited amount of adjustability here, so let's go ahead and add some more real quick. I want to ensure that I'm in this section editor, which I am. Then I want to click on the Properties tab in the ribbon bar. This lists out the properties that I can change here for the selected object. Now, we want to change the boring, so let's click on the Boring Properties button. We can see that we have a whole lot of properties to edit here. Before I change any of these properties, let's take a minute to talk about this window that popped up. It's called a dialog, and while this dialog is open, Cabinet Vision is in a sort of paused state. None of the changes we make will update Cabinet Vision until we click on the OK button. This allows us to make sure we didn't make a mistake before we confirm the changes. If we did make a mistake, or we entered something that we don't want, we can just click Cancel. 
So with that in mind, let's change the boring style from bore only required holes to bore all holes and click OK. Cabinet Vision has now updated our cabinet to have full boring on both of our end panels. Now, this method wastes machining time for us as we don't want our machine to drill boring holes for a section of the cabinet that doesn't need it. Since it's easy to change the boring, let's just click on the boring properties again. Then we can change the boring style to bore by opening and click OK. Now that's better. Our adjustable shelf now has a much larger range of adjustability and we aren't machining into the drawer section. So far, we've gone over the basic and advanced editing that we can do with the section editor. We have several other properties that we can change. I'm not going to go over them right now, but know that there are a ton of them. But what about changes that I can't make in the section editor? Well, there aren't a whole lot of those, but there are some. In that case, I would just move to our orthographic viewport and start making changes. The types of changes that I can make here would be to click on a part in the object and change its properties directly. I can also edit the shape of the object, add sub-objects, create new parts or add parts that I've saved already, add molding, and even put in some CAD if I need. I really don't want to get into the stuff we can do here right now. I, I promise I will in another video though. For right now, I would rather go over storing this cabinet so that we can use it again in this and other jobs whenever we need. Since I want to save this cabinet, I need to be back in the jobs plan for that. So let's click on the return button. Next, we can right click on the cabinet to bring up the context menu. Here we can find the save command. Now this isn't actually a command, it's a menu. If we hover our cursor over it, it will bring up the actual commands save and save as. Clicking on save will overwrite the object in the library that we pulled it from while clicking on Save As will allow us to create an entirely new object. I'm going to click on Save As. This brought up another dialog, the Save Object dialog. We can see that I have several things to do here to save a cabinet to a library. The first is to rename the cabinet, which I will change from STD Base to YouTube Base. I'm also going to change the description from Standard Base Cabinet to YouTube Base Cabinet. Now, I could select an icon, but the one that is selected represents our object pretty well, so I'm going to leave it as is. Now, before we click OK, I need to select a library to place the object into. Let's place it in the Custom Cabinets catalog under the Base Cabinet category. Now we just need to click OK. Our object has now been stored in the Custom Cabinets catalog. If any errors would have occurred, or we tried to save our cabinet with the same name as another object in that category, Cabinet Vision would have let us know. So from now on, in this job and all others, we can just go to the library and drag and drop that object onto a wall. You've seen how easy it is to customize your objects and save them back into the library. In the next video, we're going to look at creating countertops.